Hi, I'm Ryan Fitzpatrick and we're here at the New York State Museum to look at 1609, Albany's exhibition that celebrates its quadricentennial. Responsible for much of the basis for 1609 is Dr. Charles Gehring, director of the New Netherland Project at the State Library. For 35 years, Dr. Gehring has translated the government records and personal and social correspondence from New Netherland in the 1600s. By translating these documents into English, he is able to make life in New Netherland accessible to historians and scholars without having to learn Dutch. Tell me, why the Dutch? How come the Dutch colonized this area? Why not the English or the Spanish or the French? Well, it was basically an accident. Uh, Henry Hudson was hired by the East India Company to find a safe passage uh, to the Spice Islands, to Japan and China. And uh, exploring along the northern coast of uh, Norway, trying to head east over Siberia, he turned back because of heavy ice flows and headed west and ended up in the river that's eventually named after him. So he never found the passage to the to the east, but he did uh, claim a territory for the Dutch in between New England, what became New England, and the tobacco colonies of Virginia and Maryland. So it was a very successful accident. It was probably one of the best accidents in exploration history, mainly because of the location. Yeah. The location is perfect for access to the interior of the country. Gehring's important work gives him a very accurate perspective on what this culture and early colonial life was like. A key objective for this exhibition was to dispel many longtime myths about the Dutch. What are some of the key myths that, that I, you think the popular culture has about the Dutch, and what have you found out that will change our view of them? Well, when we first started talking about the exhibit, we needed uh, some sort of a central concept, and I thought that the, the, the common myths about uh, New Netherland and about the Dutch would be interesting so that we could set the record straight on, uh, on various levels. And one of the myths is that the Dutch only came here to make money. They didn't care about settling, they didn't care about colonization, which is uh, totally untrue. In the beginning, the West India Company was here to make a profit, of course, uh, but then colonists came, then the whole idea of the colony changed over the years and uh, when the English took over there were 10,000 people living here. Uh, for example, Beverwijk, the village here, wasn't just a fur trapping uh, town, uh, sort of a frontier outpost, it was, it was a very sophisticated village and it was probably as large as New Amsterdam uh, at that time. In terms of population in, and size. in terms of population. Yes. That's incredible. Did you hear that? Albany, Rensselaer, as big as New York City, almost. Right, right. Uh, the other myth is, is that uh, the Dutch bought the colony for $24. And this is, this is a, one of the biggest myths. Pure fabrication? Pure, pure fabrication. It says in the records that it was 60 guilders worth of goods. 60 guilders worth of goods would have been a lot of hard goods that the Indians couldn't produce themselves. You couldn't place a, a value on axes, knives, awls, scissors, things that they were unable, they didn't have the technology for. And it always uh, amuses me that they keep repeating this $24 figure, which was attached to the document when it was translated in the 1880s. The translator looked up the rate of exchange at that time and 60 guilders was $24. No one has ever even adjusted that for inflation over the years, so you have, uh, you ha not only have a, a, a incorrect uh, rate of exchange, but the whole idea of what 60 guilders would have been worth to the Indians at that time is totally wrong. So not only were the Dutch not here just to make a buck, but the best deal in history didn't even happen. That's right. History as controlled for many years by the English tells of the Dutch surrender at Manhattan in such a way as to present them as weak and unwilling to fight. However, led by Peter Stuyvesant, we now find the Dutch ability to negotiate makes them just as powerful as anyone with more guns. What about the myth that Peter Stuyvesant let the English take New Netherland without a fight? He was ready to fight. This is, what, this is one of the big myths. Uh, he was in the fort with 128 soldiers. He turned to them and asked them if they were prepared to defend the fort and to a man they were ready to, uh, to fight. 
unfortunately, they didn't have enough gunpowder uh, to resist. Uh, the fort was in a bad location at the tip of the island, and he also knew that as soon as he fired a shot, that the city would be open for uh, looting. This was uh, part of the warfare at that time. If you resisted, then you uh, resisted a siege. Then once the city was taken, uh, you were fair game. All bets are off. Yeah, then, uh, then the, peop the people did not want that to happen. Remember that there was no war declared at this time. It was a surprise attack by the English. Okay. Uh, they attacked Manhattan during uh, a time of peace and Stuyvesant heard rumors that they may be coming and so forth, but... Uh, but they hadn't prepared for an actual invasion. That's right. 